What's up guys? Welcome back to Do More Life and another road trip. This is my road trip partner. Mobile this, edition. Yeah, mobile edition. This is Ross. And uh, if you don't From know... Ross and Rayong. I was getting ready to say, if you don't know, Ross has a YouTube channel called Ross and Rayong. You guys can check out if you're interested in old man stuff. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do life in Thailand as opposed to people trying to tell you why you should come here. I just tell you, here, this is what you can do when you're actually here. Live, cook, take care of your yard. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what he does. Uh, but anyway, we're on a road trip to Ko Chang, and uh, I've never been to Ko Chang before. It's my I, fourth time. It's Ross's, as you heard. It's his fourth time. Um, I am definitely super duper duper excited about going to Cochang. This video um, that I'm making right now is an intro video because we're taking the scenic route to Cochang and um, we're going to stop along the way and stop at a few cool places. Maybe some waterfalls, maybe some lookouts and hopefully um, I'll get some good content from you guys. So stay tuned. Welcome guys to the first stop on the road trip to Cochang. This is the HTMS uh, Passe. Passe is the name of the town and I'm going to take you up here and show you some of the ship. Uh, this is basically just a little historic site for ties. Um, I don't think there's anything really super special to it but it was very interesting nevertheless to see a naval ship up here. Um, I think ships are cool <laughs> and it's definitely cool to see a boat parked in concrete. I also want to get out to the end here so I can show you guys um, what appears to be some type of lighthouse beacons out in the water. But this is the ship. I wish I could get you a wider view. Unfortunately, my arm is just not that long. Um, on this side, if you look down at the road, you can see some street vendors. So apparently this is a historic site that people will be attending um today tomorrow uh, because all this is being shot over the course of the chinese new year um holiday so real ship check it out kind of nice and interesting ah here you go Prase. Prase. so if you look at the sign behind me you can kind of figure out that um those are the times when you can do things and I imagine it is a tourist destination that we have stumbled upon here in fact I know it is now that you uh, can pay to get on the ship and can pay to do some other things around here so let me turn the camera around and show you guys more interesting stuff so if you look out here you can see these little white thing sticking up and that is definitely some type of lighthouse-ish material. There's a little jetty that you can walk out there to. That looks like it would be something fun to do on a boring day. In fact, that jetty, or there's another jetty over here that kind of walks around and there is the ship itself and Ross is standing on the deck. I don't know why he did that, but he is. <laughs> It is a uh, obviously a big naval ship, and I just thought it was something really cool for us to look at. So um, I'm not sure what the story is here uh, with this thing. I have no idea. Uh, not going to try to guess, but nevertheless, at least we got to see something cool today. And some really big anchors on this thing too. Man, that's a big anchor on a ship. Um, I'm not a person that's ever been able to really get two uh, naval ships to look at them up close but uh, I do find them quite interesting quite interesting for sure and on this side of the ship we have more information um, not a lot of English there so I don't really know what to tell you but if you're Thai you can certainly read it and this is I think the same sign that was on the other side that gives the opening and closing time. Um, yes, yeah, dress politely. So there is some English on there. If you're ever interested in coming to see this thing, please 
let me know in the comment section below and I will tell you how to get here. So again, sure. and I, there's 60 caliber down here and there's one right on the other side. And then I don't know what the caliber is of the cannon up there in the front, but there's one there and then there's another one just below it that you could, we can walk to as well. And then there's one in the rear. All right, so a little bit about these, let me take the old cannons. You required a whole team just to operate this. This one, the person over on the left, he did this, the up and down. Over on the right. This one's much harder, but he did the, uh, you can see this, is, it still moves, but not very well. He did the left and right. Another person would be doing the aim and telling them what to do. Then you'd have another team that just did nothing but loading over here. So it took, a, it took a lot of work just to fire one round at a time. Fire, and then you probably have all the ammunition stored on here on the sides. As well as some fire hydrants probably would be required just in case. And just cranking that thing, you need to have some really strong muscles. And that's a workout, just trying to spin that. But there's one here and one just below us as well that's even harder to spin. I've played with both of them. Even though you can't uh, hear what Ross is saying right now because the mic is turned back towards me, um, it's probably, a, we're guessing, between a three or a four inch. Three uh, I'm going to say three inches because the hydraulic here is four inch. Ross seems to think it's three inches, and I don't have any problem disagreeing with that, but uh, that's, still a, that's still a big gun. And this is looking directly off the bow of the ship. I mean, so, it's pretty If nice. he scanned it over to the left, whoa over there, during the weekends and high season, it's just full of beachside restaurants, and it goes down for about 200 meters of nothing but beachside restaurants over here on the beach of Passe. Passe. Just make sure you guys got that. Passe. Passe. 